Hello. The news seems to be full of stories and comments about electric vehicles these days. Some sing their praises, saying that they are the future of personalised transport. They are better vehicles to drive and think that they will save the environment from imminent collapse. Others claim that they are a scam. They are dangerous because they catch fire. They will cause widespread pollution because of the materials they use. And they would never take over from petrol cars because issues related to recharging and range will not be resolved. While these and many other arguments are thrown around, what is not so well appreciated is that electric vehicles used to be much more widespread on our roads than they are today, at least in percentage terms. The perception of the history of road transport is that we went from horses to petrol cars and that was that. As always, the real history is much more interesting. At the beginning of the 20th century, apart from horse-drawn vehicles, there were three other options. Steam-powered cars, tractors and trucks, electric cars and petrol cars. In the United States, around 1900, 38% of all automobiles on the road were powered by electricity. Batteries. 40% by steam and only 22% by petrol. In other major developed countries in Europe, the proportions were pretty much the same. Surprising, isn't it? There was some difference between the choice of fuels. The most versatile vehicles were steam-powered. Water could be boiled using coal or oil. Heavy haulage steam tractors like these were very common, but also cars like this. If you happen to see one of these in real life, what is striking is how fast and quiet they are. Indeed, steam cars won a lot of land speed records. The most widespread use of electric cars was in cities. Why? Electric cars were quiet, simple and reliable. They seemed to represent the future. They were clean and used by the well-off as runabouts. Typical top speeds were 25 miles per hour, about 40 kilometers per hour, with a range of 80 miles, nearly 130 kilometers. Not bad for a city runabout even today. This was a time when very few houses in developed countries had electricity, so how did they recharge their vehicles? Many people kept their electric cars in purpose-built parking garages, like this one at number 6 Denmark Street, London. It was built by the City and Suburban Electric Carriage Company and was the first multi-storey car park in the UK, and maybe the world, in 1901, with electric elevator to move the vehicles between the floors. The owners of the cars could leave them in the garage when they finished with them and have them fully charged and delivered to their homes whenever they wanted them. Let's consider the internal combustion engine and why they were far less popular. Maybe internal explosion engine would be a better name. The combustion is little different from what happens inside a gun when it's fired. The only difference is that the energy released pushes a piston instead of a bullet. The engines were very noisy. Modern cars are full of mufflers and silencers. The originals were not only noisy, they were also smoky and very dirty. In many cities around the world, petrol vehicles were banned from city centres because they frightened the horses. In New York, electric taxis were used and could be recharged or have their batteries changed very quickly at points around the city. The other big disadvantage of these vehicles was that they carried highly inflammable petrol and in some cases in glass containers. Some of the early Model T Fords had thin skin petrol tanks under the driving seat. Not exactly a recipe for tranquility. Early petrol cars did not have starter motors but a starting handle. Hand cranking an engine with a starting handle is not only hard work, it can also be quite dangerous. If it kicks back, it can break your hand or your arm if you're not holding the handle correctly. Even if it doesn't cause serious injury, a kickback can be very painful. I know, I've used a starting handle, but that can be a story for another time. So why did petrol cars become the norm? Why did steam-powered and battery-powered cars give way to petrol and diesel? Although at the beginning of the 20th century, the largest percentage of non-horse-drawn road traffic in developed countries was steam-powered, the biggest drawback is that it took a long time, sometimes hours, to get up enough steam pressure for the vehicle to work. 
The range of steam vehicles was limited mostly by how much water they could carry. This was also true of steam-powered trains, but they ran on rails with water tanks frequently available. However, the heavy steam-powered vehicles continued to be used right up until the 1940s for heavy haulage. These sentinel lorries could reach speeds of 60 miles an hour and carry heavy loads, heavier than those carried by petrol lorries. But the writing was on the wall for steam road vehicles. In 1908, the main factor was that the internal combustion engines, or maybe to use a more accurate term, the internal explosion engines, became more reliable, quieter and more attractive. The exploitation of large oil deposits around the world brought down the price of their fuel, and the internal combustion engine was refined until it was no longer the dirty, smoky, smelly, and to be honest, dangerous vehicle that it was before. The introduction of the starter motor made dangerous hand cranking less common. But also, the construction of major roads between the cities boosted petrol and diesel vehicles. Early cars of any type were mainly used as runabouts in and around specific cities where range was not an issue. In the early years, range was also an issue for petrol vehicles because petrol stations were few and far between. Indeed, in Britain, in the early years, you had to buy petrol from a chemist shop. Normally, when people travelled between cities, they would use trains. With the construction of intercity highways serviced by petrol stations, particularly after the First World War, the issues of range and recharging time became a major obstacle for electric cars. The same obstacle is facing electric cars today. Some electric vehicles continued to be used for deliveries in cities. Anyone of my age or older who grew up in Britain will surely remember electric milk floats which delivered milk and a variety of other goods to people's door every day. But these were very much a niche use. Can electric vehicles reach the proportions they did at the beginning of the last century? With the present battery technology, I doubt it very much. Close, as they say, but no cigar. The costs, both economic and environmental, are far too great. However, I quoted the great Danish physicist, Niels Bohr, in a previous video, and his words are valid here. Prediction is very difficult, especially when you're predicting about the future. Bye for now.